So, hi everyone. Thanks for, thanks very much for your interest and for your participation in this final session. Uh, for those who don't know me yet, I am Patricia Burton. I work for the Brazilian Agricultural Research Corporation, also known as Imbrapa. And I'm one of the IGAD co-chairs. We have the three co-chairs participating in this session now. Cynthia Parr from the USDA, Emma Subrats from FAO, and myself. Well, this is the final session to an event that, in our opinion, opinion was very, very successful. And we do have two topics to discuss today. Uh, these are the proposal of a community of practice in agriculture within RDA, and the idea of a new working group under the umbrella of EGAD the Crop Data Interoperability Working Group. Now, the idea for this session is to have an informal uh, discussion, a conversation, really. So if you want to uh, ask something or speak up, you can do this anytime, okay? Um, I would just ask you to uh, raise your hand virtually so that we can organize all the the uh, talks and questions. Now, to bring some information and to animate the debate, the debate, we will have the participation of Francoise from RDA. Technical Advisory Board and GR also. Well, uh, these are the main topics on the agenda, but you can propose different e chat box. Um, but before diving these very interesting themes, uh, though I, I would like to maybe invite my friend Emma to provide us with a very short recap on this week's event, how many sessions we had, how many participants in total we had, um, and things like that. Is that okay, Emma? Yes, it's okay. So very briefly, we had some five uh, sessions and with this one, um, we had six. Um, let's say that we had an, uh, more or less about 350 people uh, attending um, the sessions and we know that there was a big participation from um, Africa, Asia, and also Latin America that usually cannot attend when we have um, the EGAT meetings during the RDA plenary. So it was very good uh, to give the opportunity to share um, experiences and, um, and lessons learned uh, more broadly and widely than usual. Um, we also have recorded uh, the sessions and we have collected the slides. Um, we will not do it immediately. We will spend a little, a little bit of time. It's, it's quite, um, um, it's quite uh, time consuming to upload all these materials. So be patient. We will inform you as soon as are available uh, through the RDA mailing list. So those that are not registered, please do. Um, I hope that uh, Chelsea or Ilkay will share through the chat um, or also Patrizia or Cindy um, where you will find a mailing list. So um, yes, in general terms, um, from our side it was quite smooth. We had some uh, technical issues here and there with the bandwidth, but this is quite normal and all the meetings that are taking place in Zoom these days, so nothing nothing but in particular to worry about and um, yes we have prepared a survey um, that we are going to distribute very soon and we would appreciate very much if you can fill it because we would like to understand whether we want to continue uh, with EGAT online uh, meetings like this one for instance in the future or you prefer that we switch off and we go back to face-to-face -to -face only or a combination or to get a little bit of guidance uh, about what the community would be interested to do from now on after this uh, huge um, 
uh, uh, event in terms of um, presentations at the same time and also from um, the countries that we have received um, uh, these presentations. Um, and I think that's more or less, this is everything, Patricia. Um, if there is uh, still um, anything else, um, I will let you know during the, this call, yeah. Great, thank you, Ima. Uh, we did realize that many of the audience, um, uh, many people in the audience, they are not very familiar with RDA yet, or maybe this is the first IGAD event that you participate in. So uh, because of that, I will ask Cynthia to say a few words about IGAD, um, the creation of this interest group, what it uh, represents, and how it has evolved since 2013 when it was created. Is that okay, Cynthia? Um, now is when I confess that I forgot to prepare the slides that I said I would okay. yesterday. So give me a few minutes and I will uh, find some slides. But uh, what I will say for now is that EGAD has been around for quite a number of years and participated in many of the RDA plenaries. Uh, typically, RDA has uh, a special pre-meeting before the Research Data Alliance plenary where we have scheduled entire days of presentations. And this has been a great opportunity for people from all over the world to share their expertise. Um, we have also, because we recognize that many people have not been able to travel to the RDA plenaries, we uh, began last year doing a series of webinars so that people could see the same presentations that were presented physically so that they could see them virtually and so we've had a webinar series going now for some numbers of months uh, since the Finland meeting uh, and those are all available online as well so people can watch them at any time. Um, so what I think I might do is while uh, we start talking about this potential transition to a community of practice I'll go dig up the slides that I said I would find uh, to, to share some of the history and uh, we can perhaps come back to that after Francoise talks about the community of practice. Yes. Would, would you like to add something to that, Ema? Hi, I think. Uh, no, okay, I will wait um, the best slides that Cindy was, is going to prepare and then I can add some stuff about um, mm -hmm. my, yeah, my experience um, organizing events and so here in the end. All right, so maybe we could move on to, um, well, I, actually before that, uh, does anyone have a question, something that would like to bring to the table? Um, we are available to do that. Or any feedback about what they thought about this yes. week? That would be interesting as well, if you can share this now um, before the survey. You don't have to. You can use the chat box if you like while we are talking and if you leave, you want to leave um, a comment about what you liked or what you think that we could do best, better or etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. What you would like to see next, etc. It seems Richard would like to talk to ask something. Let me locate him, unmute him. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. Yes, I, I think it's, um, I've not been in all the sessions, but I, I think it's gone very well actually this week. Um, so I personally would like to see this continue. And I think it's been a lot more, as has just been said, a lot more inclusive, um, which is only a good thing. So yeah, I, I think it's worked very well. So well done to all of you who have been involved in making this happen. Yeah. I think, yeah, it was great. I can speak from the perspective of someone who lives in Latin America, and it's not very easy to join the, all the plenaries, two plenaries uh, every, every year. It's very expensive for us. 
And to me, this uh, event was very special. We have very, very nice work being showcased during the, the week. And although the times for me are not great, <laughs> but uh, very well. Um, I guess we already have the slides on. Um, yes, it, it was not hard for me to find them. Okay. Uh, are people able to see my screen yet? Yes, I can. I can it's showing the presentation. Yes. Okay, so I don't have a lot to say. Just uh, the first thing to point out is that uh, we have uh, an area on the Research Data Alliance website. I put the link in the chat. Uh, this is the uh, area here on the left. There is also additional information on the AIMS site, so you can also go there for information, but pretty much we would like to steer you to the RDA information on the left. We post things in both places. Um, the group has been around since the second RDA plenary. So here is a list of uh, the plenaries that we have participated in uh, through Helsinki. And then the most recent plenary in Australia was supposed to be in Australia, uh, but instead of um, being there physically, since that meeting was not held, we participated virtually. So the group dates back to 2013. And I was not involved at that time. I believe, Emma, were you there? No, I just started uh, in Amsterdam, 2014. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So the group has typically uh, been involved, at least in some way, in all the plenaries. Um, but as I said, we have had special pre-meetings with our own agenda uh, and symposia at some of them. And, and this slide deck has some links. But again, you can find all of these by going to the main RDA site. Um, as part of um, the meeting that we held in uh, Helsinki, we talked a lot about good practices in agriculture. And as I mentioned earlier, a lot of those presentations were so excellent, we wanted to make sure that they reached a broader audience. And so we began the webinar series. Um, I should also mention, and I don't have a slide for this, that we've had a number of working groups that have organized under the EGAD umbrella. And uh, one of the most successful was the Wheat Data Interoperability Group. We've had an ongoing agri-semantics working group that has uh, published recommendations and is now in the process of implementation. Um, and uh, we will continue to uh, encourage and support the efforts of those working groups. Um, but primarily to date, we have been an interest group that has had uh, hundreds of members who have joined via the website. Uh, not quite as many have participated in person. Um, and so we did start doing these webinars. This is a somewhat old slide to indicate how many people actually joined some of these webinars and how many views we had as of the Helsinki meeting. Um, one of the things that we could discuss later in, in today's session is uh, whether we should continue with this webinar format and uh, what we think of these virtual meetings such as the one we've had this week because the participation seems to be much greater in a virtual meeting that we're having now. Um, so I think that's it. This, this again is an old slide. Um, so I don't know, do we have any other webinars scheduled after this, Emma? No, 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 there is nothing. Okay, okay. So that's really all I wanted to say. Um, the, the group has uh, representation from many different continents. And uh, as you have seen, we have three leaders of the group um, from three different continents and that helps us carry the load and make sure that we can cover multiple time zones. And uh, I think we represent one of the most successful domain specific interest groups in the Research Data Alliance. And so with that, I think it's probably a good time to transition to Francoise to talk about 
the proposal that's now um, before us uh, that we're helping to develop on establishing a new kind of group within RDA that would be called a community of practice. So, yes. uh, Cindy, uh, yes. just before that, there are two comments in the chat box that I think are related to your uh, talk. Uh, well, the first one is from Karsten Hoffman saying that virtual meetings uh, do not replace uh, totally physical meetings, but um, the EGA chairs manage these virtual meetings in a very good way. Thanks. Thanks uh, for all the participants and the presenters. Uh, well, and then there, there is this idea to make one virtual and one physical meeting per year in the future. I think this is very nice, a very nice suggestion. And then mm -hmm. there is another question on how to register uh, for uh, to become a, an EGAD member. And I think it's already answered by Francoise in the chat. Yep. Thank you for all of that. I think the key thing to note about joining EGAD is that you need to first register for the Research Data Alliance website and then you can join the interest group. And we encourage you to join other interest groups as well. And essentially what you will be doing is signing up for mailing lists and you can control how those messages get to you. Uh, and then once you're a member, you can participate in uh, discussion online and you'll be getting the announcements of events like this. And uh, we can talk further about um, other benefits of, of joining the group. Yeah. Thanks, Cindy. Um, I think we can move on now to Francoise. Uh, she's going to talk a little bit about this proposal of uh, communities of practice within RDA and with a special focus on the God experience. Right, Francoise? Thank you very much. So, Francoise Renova here. I am not at all from your domain, <clears throat> I am an astronomer. But I have been following the activities of EGAD even before it was created in VRD. So EGAD has always been at the, the agriculture community has been really at the forefront in VRDA. And it has had the, one of the very first interest groups, uh, which is the EGAD group we are discussing now and who has, which has organized this nice set of meetings. So the RDA was created in March 2013 and the Agriculture Data Interest Group, IGAD, was created also in 2013. They were people from the FAO, they were, they were people from INRA in France who attended the first meeting and uh, it seems that the community understood the interest to join the RDA and to use it as a forum for discussion. So EGAD has been extremely active, as you have seen, with a long list of meetings during the plenaries. But there has been also working groups, as Cynthia was explaining, and the working groups producing recommendations, which are now uh, recommendations of the RDA. And the recommendation from the semantics group is being e examined, but they, it had a request for comments, and, uh, and uh, I think it's it's okay and things are going on with that recommendation too. So uh, this means that EGAD has now a, a long life in the RDA, nearly as long as RDA life itself. And uh, there has been a discussion about uh, trying to understand what happens which, with groups which are really mature, which have been working hard for years and what can happen then. So this is where the notion of, where is my slides? Community of practice uh, showed up. So I, I stole the, the slides from the Secretary General of uh, the RDA, Hilary Anao, who is uh, fully involved in the discussion about uh, the setting up of these communities of practices. So I am not completely sure all of us are familiar 
with what happens in VRD and what the kind what kinds of groups uh, VRD has. So just a short reminder, we have groups which are called bird of a feather, which are really more linked to having a meeting in one of the plenaries to discuss a new subject. So these groups are temporary, but they play a very important role. There is more than 100 groups who are set up to deal with different subjects in the RDA. And the BOF allows you to meet uh, other people interested in a subject which interests you, even if you don't know them, and to create a community, an international community of interest. Then we have the interest groups, which have a, a life on the long and medium and long term, like IGAD, to tackle a subject for a while. And the working groups have a short life and they are here for 18 months to prepare recommendations, which will become uh, RDA recommendations if uh, the call for comments and uh, the evaluation is okay. I mean, if they are implementable and implemented. So the idea is to create a new type of group and which is this community of practice. In this case, it is to recognize the extreme importance of domains, the involvement of domain people from domains to discuss how to share their data because they have their own needs, they know the data, they know the kind of metadata you have to attach to data, and they need places to discuss how to share their data. For the groups who, which do not have really another place to go, or for groups which, which would like to have a, a neutral place to discuss, the RDA is very good. And after a while, uh, groups may want to do a bit more and to get a, a, a kind of recognition of their role uh, from the RDA, and also to continue to bring the very important things they bring to the RDA, the hard work of the participants and the domain expertise, which is also uh, to be shared with the other groups on technical topics or any other topics in the RDA. So what to do, the, what happened was to think, people began to, to think about creating a new kind of group in those cases. And the starting suggestions were to really to be groups that these are groups which are around community of practices are they are uh, as they are called to represent the main discipline or domain stakeholders which means institutions associations etc of course uh, the membership is uh, the members of the rda who decide to join the group to have a group which gathers a critical mass of people uh, more than 100, uh, which has a really international membership, the strength of the RDA, but in your case, you have other organizations which are really international. But one of the strengths of the RDA is that it's really international, and IGAD has been a very first demonstration of that, with chairs, uh, initial chairs were from different continents. And the idea here is to go beyond uh, three, four countries, but to have at least a number of countries. The idea is to have a way to evidence the value of a community of practice. And the idea is also to, to have an idea that the group has been efficient to use the RDA mechanisms for its own needs, for the needs of its communities. And this is well measured. If, if the group, if the domain had a, a working group created and the recommendation endorsed. So this, this list is only starting suggestions and they are currently discussed. So just to tell you more uh, the calendar of what happened, there was a discussion at the beginning of the year during the first uh, uh, quarter of the year about the possibility to create a community of practice. And the, the, the discussion was triggered by discussion with IGAD between the Secretary General and IGAD. So the proposal to think, to assess how to create a new 
a new kind of group was proposed to the RDA Council, which is uh, the place to discuss and to decide on these things in March. Then a task force was created. I will tell you in a minute who is in the task force. Then there is a, a place on the website for the group to discuss. And there is a work on a draft framework. There will be, uh, there are contributions of the task force for the moment. And the idea is to be on a relatively fast track to ask the bodies of the RDA, the Technical Advisory Board, the Secretariat, and the Organizational Advisory Board to provide feedback so that there can be a community consultation and uh, assessment feedback uh, then, and then things can be decided at the council level. So again, the status, the task force began uh, not so long ago. The idea is to have people dedicated time, dedicating time to discuss the context, the scope. At the beginning, it was the scope of the task force activities. Now it's the scope of a community of practice groups. Uh, the goals and deliverable of the task force, the timing I gave it to you, and to, to take the feedback into account when it will come. So the members of a, of a group, we have a secretary general, we have two people from the secretariat, three members of a technical advisory board and the three chairs of, of IGAD. So the names are here, Hilary is the secretary general, uh, Bridget Walker is uh, the assistant of the secretary general in the secretariat. You have the three, uh, two, uh, two members of the secretary, uh, the Secretariat, you have also Stephanie Kethers, who is more knowledgeable about the organization of the RDA. The three time tab members are Dimitris Kourias, uh, myself, and Rainer Stotska. Dimitris has been active on the representation of disciplines in the RDA. He is leading a, an interest group which is called Disciplinary Interoperability Frameworks and of course, uh, the three chairs of, uh, of uh, EGAD. So I think that's all. And it's just here to, to have uh, a, a few addresses. Uh, you have a mail for uh, inquiries and uh, a few things useful to know about the RDA. I put in the, in the chat, and I was not the only one, information about how to join the RDA if you would like to join. So, any questions or comments from the other people of the task force which are around the table to this afternoon? Sorry, it may be the morning or the evening, sorry. We are a bit yeah. everywhere, I think. Thank you, Francoise, thank you. Uh, um, I would just like to highlight that uh, what we are doing here right now is sharing with the whole agricultural data community this idea of RDA, uh, creating these um, communities of practice. And we have the chance of influencing how this will um, uh, turn out uh, to be, how this will be shaped in the future. So uh, you are all welcome to bring questions um, so that we can improve this uh, this framework. This is not uh, decided yet. All the all the, the bound community, the 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 scope of the community of practice. This is not at all uh, finished. It, it's not a finished discussion. So if you have contributions, please um send them to us any questions in the chat box or anyone would like to ask something we can unmute them this is cindy and i just want to chime in that part of what we are working on as we develop this proposal further is what is the difference between an interest group and a community of practice. And mm. we need, we wanna make sure that, that it's worthwhile to create this new kind of group. And we may or may not want to think about it as a progression so that an interest group 
can form and be the start of people coming together on a particular domain topic or technical topic. And then as it progresses to become a real international, highly expert group of people, then perhaps it becomes a community of practice. But it may be that we think about them, that we should be thinking about them as somewhat different. Um, I think this is still open for questions. But one of the things that I would like to point out is that I I'm involved in a couple of other communities of practice through my work. And I think one of the great benefits of having a community of practice within the RDA structure is that we have support from the RDA sec secretariat to organize physical meetings in association with the rest of RDA. We have the opportunity to foster um, interaction between our group and the other groups within RDA. And so it is um, one of our challenges in EGAD to um, not only bring the agricultural data community together, but to try to benefit from those conversations that we can promote with other interest groups and working groups within RDA. So um, I, I really like the idea of um, having RDA as an umbrella that includes communities of practice, particularly for, do, for domains like agriculture, where there's lots of different technical topics that we're all interested in, but what we share is the application of those concepts to our work in agriculture. Um, I'm not as sure about whether communities of practice should be um, t defined from a more technical standpoint rather than a domain standpoint, but I can say that for, for this domain, we, we think it's a good idea. Maybe I think, Cynthia, if I can add some things because there are questions coming here. Uh, I think that there is a question about what is different, which, what is the difference between EGAD and the RDA. So EGAD is one of the interest groups of the RDA. So this is why to become a member of EGAD, uh, you, you join the RDA first and you can, you can then join the EGAD and any other group of the RDA. So there is also a question, what would be different if EGAD uh, becomes a, a community of practice? I think you answered, uh, you, you mm -hmm. gave uh, an already uh, detailed answer, Cynthia. I also think that uh, one, one of the feeling we have about it, or at least I have about it, is that it gives a, a stronger representation of the agriculture community in the RDA because it's a recognition of a real engagement and success and long-term commitment. And it's also a way to show, that, to show up outside of the RDA as the RDA culture, agriculture community. So it is how I, uh, I feel it uh, at this stage. Thank you, Cindy. Any more questions, comments from the audience? Well, David just posted the question about the presentations. Well, it takes a little while to upload them to a, a thousand research, um, but we will let you know through the RDA uh, mailing list. Um, okay, so maybe we can move on to the next topic. Uh, to do that, I would like to invite uh, Meda Devar from CGAR. She's going to present a draft framework for a new working group associated to EGAD, uh, which is the Crop Data Interoperability Working Group. Meda, with you now. Yeah, hi everyone. I am trying to share my screen and having a little bit, can you see my screen now, hopefully? Yes, yes, perfectly. Okay, great. So um, a few weeks ago, um, several weeks ago, Ima and Patricia and Cindy um, 
met with me and uh, broached the, the subject of this crop interoperability group, modeled on the work that the wheat uh, data interoperability group has done. Uh, that was seen as a pretty successful uh, exercise. And so we thought that, that there was, there was um, a need for this. So I thought I would frame, you know, before I sort of launched into the operational framework, uh, some of these slides, some of you may have seen before, but I've added a few now. Um, I thought I would, I would just ground the, the whole discussion on, on why are we even talking about this group? What, what is the reason for it? So um, one of the key issues is that standards have proliferated. And so there are often bespoke ontologies, for instance, um, for the, to help describe concepts related to different crops. Uh, for instance, again, that's just one instance uh, of, of the issue. Uh, and so you often have term duplication or very similar terms uh, that, are, that exist in different ontologies that kind of refer to the same parent concept, uh, but because of the needs of the, the domain experts who are using that ontology, uh, the, 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 the term is labeled differently. And so I've given an example here, which actually has already been addressed. Um, uh, the, the spike in wheat, the rice in the, the, the panicle in, in rice, uh, the year in corn, they're all influence, inflorescences, uh, but, but they're labeled differently. And, and when you actually go to build a tool that might use um, ontologies that, that is based on ontology, like a data collection tool, for instance, or, or want to label your data in a certain way, um, you may actually need to call it a spike, a panicle, or a year, but you may actually also want to refer to the, to the higher level class, uh, which is inflorescence. That's just one example of, of what the problem is. There are, there are many others, but I wanted to give a sort of a, a clear example so you could um, grapple with it. Um, so, so really the, the existence of multiple terms to describe similar concepts might, uh, in, not in all cases, but might actually def defeat the purpose of these standards or minimize their impact or make it very difficult for uh, data managers and researchers and others who are working with the data to figure out, um, you know, how to, how to describe um, data variables in a way that makes it possible to enable interoperation cross mapping. Um, so, so the, the, the actual interoperability across the standards themselves um, seems to be a key requirement for researchers going forward in the agricultural sector. So um, when we talk about making data more interoperable, more fair, um, that might be a key requirement that we need to sort of put in place the, 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 the mapping across these uh, related terms that would then allow for, for easier aggregation and, and semantically driven reuse of the data sets. That's where this is really coming from. So what will this um, effort really result in? What do we expect from it? Um, there are four key things, and there may be more. This is just off the top of my head. And as we move forward with this effort, uh, this is likely to change because, you know, the idea is to bring uh, more community engagement into this effort, but to not present everybody with a blank slate. So that's why I've tried to strike a balance between developing some stuff um, and then involving others to take this forward. Um, so what is this expected to result in? Uh, one is effort to uh, improve cross mapping of interoperability standards pertaining to crop data uh, through wider engagement with the community, as I mentioned. Um, we hope that through this effort, we can also promote uh, uh, more adoption, wider adoption of uh, these enhanced standards and the better annotation of, of crop data really. So easier a discovery of and access to these data uh, as part of the, the fallout from it. Um, and the improved ability to aggregate the data and apply um, big data tools and technologies, machine learning tools um, to them through uh, you know, more consistent use of standards that are uh, now mapped um, well across related uh, concepts. So what is the, the, the sort of the envisioned way of doing this? And so I had presented a few weeks back um, at, a, at an organizational meeting, uh, a kind of a high level operational framework, and I've done a little bit more work on it. 
Um, so one of the first steps would be to identify known key stakeholders and potential group members. Um, I've sort of uh, done that with input from, from Ima and um, Cindy and Patricia uh, to this, um, who might be some, some initial contacts. I mean, this, this group is only gonna grow. So we've started a list. Um, and some of you who are present are on that list, uh, others are not, and, and I will be sending out emails uh, shortly to invite you as initial participants. And so the, the idea is to span uh, organizations and sectors. You can see some of the list here, some of the, the examples here from uh, both the public and private sector. Um, the, the, the thought was to ask for some, some initial sort of volunteers, heavy lifters, we, we call them, from a cross section of these organizations who, will, who are willing to work together uh, to do, as the name implies, some heavy lifting, which, is, which means to, to actually uh, dive in and, and produce some you know, content perhaps, to revise the draft um, framework, to add to it, um, and to do to 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 perhaps to to develop a survey. So some of the more uh, um, content-heavy work that's involved in this uh, is is what we envision this group to be doing. And then the the the, the products that this this heavy lifters group develops will be validated by the wider group of of participants, the key stakeholders that are not part of that heavy lifters group. Um, the outputs from this group uh, will hopefully result in in a paper that and will include a, a rationale problem statement, methodology findings, um, recommendations, summary guidelines, and many of these, these pieces will exist as um, separate, separate items perhaps, um, separate uh, resources for people to go to um, from the EGAD uh, uh, website or this new community of practice website, depending on how things go. Um, we also want to consider how impact might be measured because a lot of these things, you know, are, are one-offs. You do this and then it's done and there's no indication of whether that, that piece of work has had impact, whether it might be revisited, modified slightly, um, what that impact might be and how you measure it. So, so I sort of propose that that might be um, something we want to dive into a little bit more as well. So the key tasks for the lead um, with input from the heavy lifters perhaps um, and let me minimize my, my Zoom thing, which is interfering in what I see, um, is articulation of needs and gaps in a problem statement, along with an identification of key milestones associated deliverables and timeframe. So this work um, I have already done, and I can hopefully click on that, but I think I'm going to have to shop, stop um, sharing my screen and share this new screen. So let me try and do that. You should be now able I think we to could see it, Meta. We, oh, really? we were able to see it, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, now I don't know, I've lost my place, but let me, can you, so hopefully you can see this. And what I want to focus on is the key milestones, activities, and time frame. I don't want to go through a blow by blow account of all of these, but just to let you know that, that this has been sort of fleshed out a little bit. Um, with, with the, you know, the key pieces being the co community agreement on scope of work and the approach of the group, uh, the development of survey as part of that, um, uh, and, and then the administration of the survey. So, so as part of the administration of the survey, of course, you have to, you have to, to agree on a tool and develop the survey, et cetera. So that's, that's, that's part of it. And then based on um, what the survey says, uh, develop a set of recommendations um, and, and, and share that. Uh, with the with the group and valid have it validated by the group, um, and then present those those the 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 methodology um, sort of a, the 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 the, in, the the outputs from the survey, um, and the recommendations. Ideally, at the the RDS uh, plenary in in 2021. So that's a very broad view of what this might look like. And I'm going to go back now to my presentation. Whoops, I keep doing this. Um, which you should be able to see here again. Uh, so let me know if you can't see that presentation. But I just wanted to give you a flavor of the of the um, milestones and the associated deliverables. So hopefully um, there will be more tweaking of that, more work on it as we start to build the momentum uh, with a broader group. Right now it's just been out of my head. Um, right. 
So the draft plan of work and key contacts to fill the, the gaps, as I mentioned, this, this will be a living document. And by that, I mean that it will change as, as the group becomes more involved uh, and people start uh, investing more in this. Gathering relevant learnings and materials known to the group. Uh, that will happen once the group is set up. Um, so everything in green is, is stuff that's already been done to some degree, to one degree or another. Um, I've started in on that. Uh, gathering the relevant learnings and materials that'll come as we engage the group more, of course. Um, and this is again tasks uh, that I envision will be primarily led by that heavy lifters group, the, the first responders, if you will. And then some others, um, drafting, validating, testing, and conducting the survey, and that will focus more on a landscape analysis. So the idea is what's out there, what's going on already um, in terms of approaches and standards towards enabling crop, crop data interoperability. The, the, the work done with the wheat data interoperability and the rice data interoperability will form um, some, some of the basis for this I'm envisioning. Analyzing the survey results, sharing that back with the respondents and, and the group members. Um, and then of course, as I mentioned, drafting recommendations and operational guidelines. Um, uh, ideally, this would include some resources, tools, and ways to incentivize and facilitate adoption of, of the standards themselves. Um, and then, and, and also, um, you know, sensitizing folks to what's already out there, what's already been done, uh, where can you go for those resources. Uh, validating all of this work with the, with the wider group not just the heavy lifters, um, refining based on the, on the feedback of the group, and then sharing the final recommendations and guidelines with group members and posting to the RDA, um, uh, the appropriate RDA website is it for, for wider, um, you know, wider uh, availability. So I think that's pretty much, oh no, I had one more slide, I think. Nope, that's, that's pretty much it. So, um, if there are questions, I'm happy to take them, um, but that's pretty much all I had to, sh to say for now. Um, and then we'll go forward with, um, you know, with contacting the, 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 the group members that we already have and uh, moving forward with, um, you know, others that they might know uh, in terms of, you know, how to, how to sensitize, how to move this forward. Thanks, Meda. Do we have questions from the participants? Well, there is a comment by Hannington. Meda, can you see there? Uh, about the milestones and tasks. Right. I think you showed something about it. Yeah, can you share the document again? Maybe you can show that yeah. part. That would Here be helpful. The document. So the, yeah, okay, hold on one second. So hopefully you can see this now. Can you see the document? Yes. yes. Okay. Let me turn off my video. Okay. Can so, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I'm having trouble um, <laughs> managing all my screens here. Uh, could somebody tell me what the question is? It was just to share the milestones and tasks. And so I, I think what you're showing here is, is what you're envisioning as the, the, the tasks in each broad group yes. and when we expect to do them. Yes. So and I as I said, this is likely to change um, because, you know, this is just, as I said, just me, but it's in, it, it, this is in, it, intended to be a community effort. Um, so we're just in the early stages now of, 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 um, of gathering, you know, we have some initial contacts, we will be contacting them soon, I will be contacting them uh, with the involvement of Ima, Cindy and um, Patricia. And with that initial group of heavy lifters, uh, we'll be taking this forward. First, the first task for the heavy lifters will be to look at this scope of work, in fact, and see if it, if it, if it meets the needs, if, if uh, the problem statement is appropriate, if there's stuff to tweak or add or take away from it, um, and then move forward based on that and, and refine the milestones based on, on that. So does that answer your question? Okay, yes. Uh, Meda, then I think that maybe uh, people from 
the audience, they might have an interest in contributing to this group, to this new working group, or maybe they could help out uh, with the identification of stakeholders, um, yeah, the heavy lifters you, you said. So please, uh, anyone with good ideas and uh, good contacts, um, Please yes, and I see that Marie Angelique um, has already added um, a bunch of stuff, and we've already got those on the list. So thanks, Marie, and you're on the list too, by the way. So, <laughs> so Meta, could you talk about who you think you know what? So, so these are some examples: Plantium, AgBio data, and ontology uh, community of practice of big data. These are examples. Can you talk a little bit about what kind of person you are hoping to engage? In this yeah, work, since this so is that, about crop data interoperability, these would be folks who are actually working with, um, to, to some degree, I think it's important to involve people who are working with crop data, who may not necessarily be ontology folks, but I would imagine that the group would be um, to, you know, the, 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 the heavy involvement would be the people who are kind of steeped in the ontology work themselves. So these, these, these uh, projects that Marie brought up are, you know, people who are already working on this issue of uh, enabling that interoperability. So it's good to, to start with what's already done and, and where the gaps still exist and, and how we fill those gaps, the recommendations for filling those gaps. And I think that requires uh, the, the, the view of the, the work, the heavy lifting from primarily the, 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 those working with the ontologies. Um, and those working to enable the interoperability, uh, but with consultation um, that involves data managers and uh, researchers who are grappling, you know, from the user end, the user perspective right. as well. So these could be tool builders who are using or developing ontologies, or I would say perhaps any kind of crop data standards, whether they're ontologies or not, um, yeah. Yeah. and who are engaged with their own stakeholders but want to be uh, in communication with other people who have been doing similar work. Sure, and I think that's what that what that brings to mind to me is uh, sort of a statement. Um, you know, when these emails go out, for instance, as to the kind of person or persons, you know, the, the sort of the the the, the group uh, the the group skills or the expertise the the expertises that we want uh, that we feel might be most helpful. So I, I'm going to, going to call out Cheryl Porter's name, and, and she doesn't She's have. She's already to speak on the list. Yes. yes. I've already, yeah. So <laughs> um, just for for other folks on the call, Cheryl has been involved in the um, AgMIP efforts, uh, crop modelers who have been doing a lot of data interoperability work, and and she may have interacted with some of you others on the call. Um, so it's it's that kind of effort that has already been going on and now we want to bring it all together with other people doing similar work. So, you know, the AGMA project is a case in point there. I mean, they've done really valuable work in enabling um, this kind of interoperability and they've already done a fair bit of mapping across standards. So I think, uh, you know, there we get both the tool uh, sort of development and, and one approach and the researcher point of view. Uh, I think we also get that when we involve the Plantium project, and in fact, also the Ag Bio um, folks. So, you know, I, I take your point. I mean, I, I think it's really important to have that broad representation, um, and it's and it'll be important for me when I send out these emails to sort of draft that more clearly. I think there's a comment here about. Um, adding a, a working group case statement submission in the timeline. Uh, so I thought I had that, but perhaps not. If not, I will, I will uh, rectify that. Absolutely. Thanks, Francoise. Then there's a question from Richard. Uh, I keep moving this thing. Is the focus on ontology development to support interoperability or more widely for data management activities to support all aspects of FAIR for ag data? Um, so this particular group is more to support interoperability across crop data. Um, so, you know, looking at the crop data standards out there and figuring out, um, you know, what 
whether there is, you know, there's already some siloing happening, whether there's, um, you know, how, how can we map across those efforts to, to make things more streamlined uh, for those who want a higher level view and not a very, very crop specific view um, of, of um, you know, to describe, to describe data. Does that answer your question, Richard? And you're you're also on that list. <laughs> so you can also determine the direction this takes. <laughs> to, to add on to your answer, Meta, I think um, we want to keep the scope fairly focused on the interoperability piece because otherwise it becomes a discussion about everything. And yeah, we have exactly. other other discussions in EGAD about things like data management planning in general, or metadata, or catalogs, yeah. or capacity yeah. building. So there, there's lots of other things about data management that we will not uh, expect this particular working group to tackle. Um, and Cheryl Porter had raised her hand, and I unmuted her. So Cheryl may want to weigh in. OK. Hi, everybody. It's good to see this going forward, and I'm happy to be part of it. Um, I do have. <laughs> I, I'm maybe a little bit too um, impatient natured and I, you know, we're already doing a lot to um, implement data interoperability standards, although, you know, what I'm focused on is, is fairly narrow, I, I admit, but I wouldn't want to see those efforts hampered by going, so I, I think we need parallel tracks. One, we need this track that I think Meta was describing very well, where we build a community and get, um, you know, get consensus and work on all these, you know, try to coordinate all these working parts. But at the same time, I don't want to hamper efforts that are already ongoing. Um, in, in, you know, at, at the forefront of my mind as I was writing an email this morning to Meta saying, "Hey, we really need to get together the Brappy." group with uh, Guardian and with the Ag Data Commons group because we have common interest and we need to further our data interoperability work. So it's, that, that's my main comment is that we need to move forward with what we're already doing at the same time have a parallel track of bringing in a, a broader community. That was it. Okay. I think someone else raised uh, their hands. Uh, Francoise? No, I might be mistaken. Um, any more questions? Um, Meta, you're now unmuted. <laughs> Thank you. I thought maybe that was by design. <laughs> it was not on purpose. <laughs> um, no, I just wanted to follow up on Cheryl and and say absolutely. I mean, here, here. You know, it's it's not that we're. I think I I would hope that this effort would only um, sort of be a sort of a clearinghouse almost for all the efforts that are out there and figure out is you know what is missing and how, what where where does effort need to be um, placed um, to get to that holy grail you know that I think we're all after in terms of you know related to um, enabling full interoperability. Um, so that's the, the, the idea. And I think the survey will help, you know, for many of us, I think we already know what's out there, but we may still be surprised. And so that's the idea behind the survey and identifying what the needs are, uh, getting some of the more user perspective into, into uh, what we're doing. Not to say that we're not already doing that. Absolutely we are. And I think you of all people, Cheryl, uh, through AgMIP are um, very much connected with the users and their needs. Um, and the tools that you've developed respond to them. But I think it, it still helps keep us real and it, it will be um, a useful exercise to do that. So I completely agree with you. That's a long-winded way of saying uh, yes. Okay. So maybe I can say a word with my tab hat. Yes. Uh, the, for the people who don't know VRDA well, the Technical Advisory Board is examining and evaluating the, the proposals for new groups. So if I can say one or two words about what uh, my feeling now, 
it's uh, I completely agree with the answer to the question, which is, and uh, the core of it is that the working group has only 18 months, as you know very well, because you did a detailed timeline. And uh, seen from where I am, I don't know the topic. I think, I feel it's an ambitious aim, but it's really worth. And uh, the fact that you want to engage people who are really knowledgeable, I think it's a, a good way to, to be able to do it. So I, I feel, uh, I, you know, seen from outside again, I think it's very ambitious for 18 months, but if you really are able to engage the right people, it's, it's do, likely doable and it will be really worth. Well, Francoise, thank you. Uh, we will keep that in mind. And, and just to put some context on this, perhaps I'm extremely optimistic, but in the earlier timeline, before Ima pointed out that, you know, we actually, that we would have 18 months, I had us delivering a sort of a, a finished product in November of this year. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I think that as Cheryl points out, there's already been lots of work on this. So, so yeah, it's not yeah. as if we're starting from zero, that the challenge is just to make sure that we know the landscape, that we identify any remaining gaps, that we provide the recommendations so that people know how to navigate that landscape. And if there are gaps, what the plans are to fill those gaps. So, Absolutely. Um, and that's a very generic answer. I'm not a crop data expert myself. So, uh, more like Francoise, I think it, it's really a matter of um, trying to make sure that the progress that's already been made gets solidified and promoted and put into practice um, with the guidance of all the relevant experts. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> any more questions, guys? Well, if we don't have any more questions from the audience, then I think I'm going to thank Medda for the nice Thank you, Patricia. Thank you to all of you. Um, and stay tuned to hear more about this. Thanks. Well, well we have a new hand raised. Oops. Um, let me try to unmute. Oh gosh. Oh, Hello. Okay. Oh, yes, you can talk. Meta, ma'am? Yes. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, I can. Uh, ma very nicely you have explained all the information. Uh, nicely presented. But ma ma'am, I am having one question that you are from India that I have asked the question, you have not answered it. Yes, I am. Okay, okay. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, sure. Thank you. Okay, uh, so I think we covered the agenda very well. Now, if any of you have uh, a new issue, a different topic to be to bring to the table, uh, please do it. We still have a few minutes. Um, or maybe we could go back. Uh, Ima, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, so maybe we could uh, spend the last few minutes just discussing how we plan to move forward now with EGAD and with all these um, meetings. Uh, it seems that uh, many people liked these, these, uh, this style of uh, meeting online. Um, do you have any any thoughts to share about that for the future, Ima? Well, I like uh, very much the proposal from Karsten. I mean, I think that the combination between face-to-face -face and virtual could work because eventually we need to meet and we need to have face-to-face um, um, -face events to, to have more informal mm. contacts and it's very useful. Um, mm. So the point then is uh, to decide um, to what um, plenaries we go. 
So we could make a combination. I think the next one, Francoise, is in Europe or is in Costa Rica? I think, I think that in I November, think there is Costa Rica and mm. then next, the next one is in Scotland, in Edinburgh. So yeah, we could always look at um, what is more feasible for the community because mm. it seems like it's easier for people in Asia to come to Europe rather than going to the United States or um, Central America. I don't know, we would need to look at it very, more carefully, but we can put it in the survey as well. Uh, we didn't put this. We mm. could uh, ask uh, what is the combination that um, the, the people would prefer, particularly um, from November on. Yes, um, there is a question from Richard. If we know whether the next uh, plenary in maybe Costa Rica, right? Uh, if it's going to be virtual or not. I don't know if Francoise knows that. No. I don't know. Can you? Well, she is no. through the chat. Uh, right. well, OK, so now I can speak. Uh, there is, of course, work ongoing. To, to understand how to organize the next plenary. Uh, what I can say is that the virtual plenary has been really a success with more than 900 people participating uh, really to, to the sessions, I mean, and many, many, many people registered all in all. So I think it's, uh, there is a discussion about what will go on in Costa Rica. Uh, my well, I, I think I hope they will announce something soon, but for the moment, to my knowledge, there is no decision taken. But of course, uh, the fact that uh, the, to have a virtual component, uh, the value of a virtual component is well understood after what happened with a Melbourne plenary, which became virtual. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, here probably Cindy wants to add something as well about the fact that in Helsinki um, last year, we already got um, kind of proposal from those that attended the plenary saying that um, in many cases, people cannot aff not afford to join um, the plenary so easily. So they ask us whether we could do something like interim uh, meetings between plenaries to uh, facilitate um, the attendance of uh, more people from uh, either Americas or Europe, Asia and Africa. Um, it happened eventually that we proposed to have um, a combination of uh, annual uh, meetings either in Washington or in Rome, but suddenly the COVID-19 showed up and therefore we decided to uh, mobilize our um, resources and uh, any effort in organizing this virtual meeting instead. But there was already an ongoing discussion, let's say, um, in Helsinki about um, the community moving to something that would become a little bit uh, less, um, less committed in terms of um, um, costs and uh, funding uh, for and, and to facilitate the attendance of more people to the um, to these meetings. I don't know, Cindy, if you want to add something to this. No, uh, I think the only thing that I have also been wondering and could use some feedback on is um, in the past, we have tried to have a little bit of remote participation in our plenary meetings, but I don't know if it's been as successful as this entirely virtual meeting. I mean, the nice thing about this kind of meeting is that everybody has um, closer to the even playing field because everybody is remote. And it's, it's a little harder, I think, to have a combination of remote plus physical, partly because of the time zone challenges, but um, also it's always hard to engage everybody who's not in the room at the same level as those who are in the room. So um, I, I think we do need to get uh, a good balance between 
either all virtual or all physical um, and, and try to do both. Yeah. Um, I, I just, <laughs> I want to point out also somebody in the chat has asked about certificates of presentation and we had gotten some inquiries about this uh, in the lead up to this week. And we have now gotten uh, a template from RDA that we can use to provide certificates of participation. So um, please contact us offline about that and we'll do our best to provide those. I don't think we'll provide them to everybody automatically. There's, there's too many people who uh, have participated and most people don't need that. So if you could just contact us offline, uh, we'll, we'll provide you with that certificate. Okay, do we have any more comments here? Um, yeah, we've had a couple of suggestions in the comment about topics that we could cover, um, including things like data quality and health related. So I think both of those would fall under EGAD topic areas and we could um, consider a special call for presentations or discussion on those topics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there is something that we didn't mention yet. Um, we did receive many more submissions that, than we could accept this time. So uh, we would like to let you know uh, the, the people who submitted and who didn't uh, have their work approved for presentation this time. We would like you to know that next time we want to make sure uh, you will be able to present and share your work with everyone. Um, but um, surely we, we had many more presentations this time than we usually have at the pre-meetings, for example. They are much uh, shorter. Um, yes, there is another question from David. Um, he asks if there, there are specific roles and responsibilities for civil society activists or their organizations. Um, Cynthia asked him to specify, explain a bit more. Uh, but uh, I think we could say that uh, there is no kind of restriction uh, for participation of uh, civil society in RDA or EGAD. And um, RDA is very open uh, to participation from people in all sectors. So I don't know if this is your case, uh, David. But please uh, feel free to join in uh, the RDA if you haven't done this yet. And let's start talking. Um, actually, this is a message that we would like to send to all the audience. Um, the people who are not members of RDA, uh, please join in. Um, and please watch out the EGAD website for news uh, regarding all the presentations in this uh, week, during this week, and uh, future events as well. And so if we don't have any more questions, um, yeah, <laughs> let's start talking. Yeah, if we don't have any more questions, I would like to thank everyone for their participation in all the sessions uh, in this week's event. Uh, I would like to thank especially all the people who presented their work, their, their good work. Um, yeah, any final words, Ima? I think that Meda yeah. wants to say something, but I cannot unmute her for any reason. Let me try here. I tried as well and I can't. Meda, you're unmuted now. I think we were both trying to unmute at the uh, same time. <laughs> okay, great. Now, I just wanted to, to jump in um, to, um, to, I guess it was David, David Joseph Aliu, his comment about civil society activists or their organizations. And the reason I find that interesting is because, um, you know, things, we are, we are moving agriculture to a very digital 
sort of space. And data is very much, uh, you know, the 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 you know a, a, a treasure. I mean, it it is um, it's it's everywhere, and it needs to be handled. Uh, responsibly, it needs to be handled ethically. Increasingly, as we're talking about digital agriculture, transformation of the agricultural space, we're going to be be running up against issues of ethics and responsible management, and uh, you know all sorts of other things uh, in terms of also the solutions we build and the tools we build. And so, it is an interesting point that he makes about uh, uh, not just civil society activists, but also farmers organizations and, and other groups like that who are intended to be sort of the ultimate, if you will, in quotes, beneficiaries of the work that we do quite far downstream. So it would be interesting to see if there are ways of engaging more formally with, with these groups as we go forward. I don't have answers to that, but I can see that you know that that could be of value for uh, and a win-win really across across sectors or, or across the the kind of groups, um, the stakeholder groups. Thanks. And as a follow-on to that, Meta, uh, thank you for for recognizing the direction of that question. Um, I, I do want to put a shout out to another virtual workshop that is happening on June 24th on the topic of agricultural data ownership and privacy. And so we have a number of speakers lined up who will be uh, particularly from the research and development community thinking about some of these more ethical and legal issues about research data. Um, and I will find a link and drop it into the chat, but I encourage everybody to register for that. It was originally going to be a face-to-face -face meeting that we thought we would have only 50 people for, and I think we already have more than 150 people registered. So this is a big benefit of having virtual meetings. You can have global participation to things that otherwise you wouldn't uh, be able to do. Right. Emma, do you want to say uh, some final words? No, just that has been a, a very nice and exciting experience this week. I uh, personally have learned a lot about uh, what's going on uh, in many of your organizations. It has been really interesting. And um, yeah, so I would really simply say that please fill the survey because we really need to understand how to move forward. Um, and it would be very important that we get um, this feedback um, uh, as early as possible. Um, definitely, I think I'm going to attend these workshops in there. Seems to be quite interesting. Um, and, um, and nothing, I think that uh, we can keep in touch. Let's uh, meet virtually again. Yes. Uh, remember that we are organizing these webinars. We don't have any in the pipeline, but if you really want to uh, share with the, com the community, with the interest group at the moment, your, um, your work, you, you should uh, remember that there is always this um, opportunity to request us to have this webinar and we organize it for you and we can uh, share it with um, all the people that are subscribed to RDA and EGAT. So nothing else, Patricia. Okay, so thank you guys. Thanks everyone for their very rich uh, participation uh, in this uh, virtual event. We are very, very happy with the result, with how it uh, worked out. Uh, thank you. Have a nice uh, evening or afternoon. I don't know, everyone. Uh, this is a very global example of a global community, right? Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.